Hi, everybody. Hey. February 8th. How's it going? Uh, uh, chaos metric, or wait, chaos DEI working group. Ruth, welcome. See you joining there. So today, go ahead and add your favorite vegetable. And I think we got a couple that just say all <laughs> for our sharing, <laughs> for our sharing. All right. Um, all right, so here's here's the minutes for today. I I don't know who is facilitating today. If we um, had a facilitator, I was supposed right. to be me, but oh. you can do it. I mean, we're just kind of we're just kind of rolling. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Um, all, right. all right, so Sean, did I hear you say you would be happy to do it next yeah, time? Sure. All right. <clears throat> then Ruth and Mary, hi. All right, so we have this new metric that we're talking through. And the intention here, I think, is to not only develop the metric, um, but also include the metric in the DEI badging program. And so I'll bring up the metric here. And so Elizabeth, do you wanna talk anything about what you had added here? Or was it like fundamental changes? I think Elizabeth just froze. There, she's back. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank you. My Zoom keeps crashing. I don't know why. Look at, do you see yourself twice? I do see. I see her frozen, Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm making the Elizabeth motion. army. We're going to. So the animated Elizabeth arm. and motionless Elizabeth. <laughs> My clones are <laughs> happening, yes. Um, I was just going to say, I was asking until we realized that you were frozen. Was there anything like substantive that you, that you added or that, you know, that you feel like might have changed anything or was it just about clarity? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think mostly just about clarity. I added all of these and I kind of took, cause I noticed that Josh had taken inspiration from our event accessibility metric. So that's mm -hmm. um, also I just kind of followed that lead because I think that that's a good a good um, model. what's the word I want a good model yeah for that because it's okay. kind of the same thing like to what extent is are the event organizers doing this thing mm -hmm. and so I just thought of some things and I put them in here feel free to take them out or do whatever but this is just like off the top of my head some things I thought of okay um, and I assume all of this lines up with kind of the overall metric the yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Okay, um, great. A clarifying question from it's the presentation of this yesterday in the community meeting. Are we are we specifying the details of health and safety metrics, or are we are we referring to that online health site for that you showed us yesterday, Elizabeth, or is it a combination of both? I personally think it's a combination. Okay. Um, because right. we uh, we will point people. I think Josh has that down under references or tools. Tools. Mm -hmm. I think he added it as tools. So, um, oh, is this Josh coming? Yeah, he is. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, I think I don't want to like duplicate, but also like we we would need something in the metric besides just like a, a, a reference winger. to something else. Yeah. So I, that's my personal feeling. Happy to. You know, I'm whatever. I don't that. have super strong feelings about any of it. I'm so good with good. that. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Hi, hey, Josh. Hello, hello. Uh, how's it going? Um, could somebody drop the minutes in there for Josh? Yep, got it. Thank you very much. It's going well. How's everybody? We're good. We're good. Today is uh, last week was your favorite fruit. Today's your favorite vegetable. Just so you know. If you add your name to the attendee list. <laughs> oh, excellent. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're talking, we're just talking through the metric that you had put together. And uh, Elizabeth was just commenting on um, some additions that she had made to the Google Doc. Okay, fantastic. I uh, am not quite at my desk yet, so I'm still using my mobile, but I am taking a look okay. at and uh, excited to be working on this together. Okay, um, just kind of as an update for you, Josh, really what Elizabeth had added was I think just kind of applying a little bit more detail 
in terms of kind of helping guide people on on the metric you know what I mean and so it's just a, a set of points that are I think in line with um what you all have put together and so it's just a it's just to provide a little bit more information in the chaos metric itself is that right Elizabeth yeah and then um obviously we will point to the public health pledge website as a tool and I think you added that in there already Josh so um right. I think that that is good. I, I would really like to know your thoughts about um, the list when you get a second with the list I put in there if I'm if we're missing something or if that's not proper if that's not accurate like any changes you would we would mm -hmm. recommend of just to give guidance people on like the things that they can do. And I really like how you it seems like you took the um, event accessibility metric as a kind of a template as a model for this which I totally agree with and that's kind of where my head was going when I put that list together so. Just some context. Okay, awesome. I am looking at the doc now. I did have one question about the a question about the question for our metric. Um, I know traditionally we've tried to like make them super succinct and, and kind of tight. So I don't know if we want to tighten this up, if we are okay with it how it is. Like I don't have again super strong feelings about it either way. Just if we are going to be a little more consistent with our metrics, we might want to tighten that up a little. Right. Yeah. I saw. I saw that feedback, and I was thinking about that. Um, I, you know, if, if what I'm the needle I was attempting to thread there was to elicit enough information from the uh, respondent so that uh, the folks who were doing reviews could, you know, had enough to 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 go on. Um, because since there are so many sort of subcategories of, in, of, of little details that add up to, um, you know, that, that factor in here, but maybe that's not, maybe there's a better approach than shoehorning it all into the question. What, you know, what, what, what would your instinct to be here? I, so looking at the question, I up until like not saying, but that part right there, that first part, <clears throat> I I like that because it gives clarity on what is meant here by public health and safety. We, we do have other metrics about safety or metrics models about safety. And so I think this, the description here, at least in those first like line and a half is real helpful in terms of defining what is meant here by public health and safety. Okay, so maybe maybe at minimum, uh, you know, there's that, that second part, like how do prospective attendees or participants yeah. uh, learn about it? Maybe that's not quite as pertinent to getting to the heart of the matter and that can be uh, you know, safely, safely dropped, but the rest maybe is specificity we wanna keep there. Yeah, I would support that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. So just put a question mark here. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, like that. Okay, great. Does that help, Elizabeth? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I just don't want to overwhelm folks if they're looking at a list of questions. You know what I mean? Like, because we have, mm -hmm. sometimes we list all the metrics and then yeah, I think that's perfect. Right on. Cool. Okay. Um, so I, I think really at this point, based on Elizabeth's comments, Josh, it would be for you to either re um, accept or reject Elizabeth's comments, kind of how you feel it works with what you're trying to express. And then we're probably getting pretty close to having this as a metric would be my guess. Okay, also, cool. oh, sorry, okay. sorry, Josh. Um, I just want to uh, draw attention to the fact that I did add Matt, I added your name and Josh, I added your name at the bottom. Um, if you don't want your name on there, totally fine. Just, you can just take that off. <laughs> awesome, I appreciate that, definitely. Uh... Definitely looking to, to claim a little credit for, for the work. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, scrolling through the doc here, 
Uh, I am inclined to uh, accept all of the suggestions here. I think this is all, uh, this is all really, <laughs> these, are, these right. are great suggestions. Thank you. Great. So when you do that, or I mean, we can do it too, but um, we will get this into, I don't think it's in the spreadsheet right now, Elizabeth, did you add it there? Maybe you did. I don't think I did actually. That's a good question. Okay. We, Josh, we have a tracking spreadsheet that just kind of tracks all of the metrics that we've published or are thinking about. And so we'll get that in there. And then Elizabeth, I think we could probably go through the process of starting to get this published as a metric and get it out for community review. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay, great. All right, so um, put an action item in here, Josh. Oops. Accept changes on AI Matt. Add to spreadsheet. And then Elizabeth, I'll just kind of put you down for like getting this going. Yeah, for sure. Actually, it is in the spreadsheet. So somebody added oh, it, it with me. I don't know. I don't know. know. <laughs> probably Matt. It probably was Matt. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So I had a question. I think this came up in the maybe in the community call yesterday, but just um, how we propose as a metric to include this in the badging process that's like easiest for applicants and easiest for reviewers and still, you know, ser serves the needs of everybody who's involved. And so, um, Josh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with our badging process. But one of the things that we do is as event organizers apply for the badge, the review process is on GitHub. It's fully public and fully transparent and all the conversation is, is there. So that was pretty important for us that we are open and transparent about um, people applying as well as people reviewing uh, the information that has come in. Right. It's, so, um, and it's worked really well. We, we finally, I think it's taken maybe a few years, but I think we have the process down pretty well. Um, there are some challenges just in terms of continuing to have enough uh, reviewers that can assign badges. And, but again, I think we have that all, all pretty well organized. Elizabeth, Ruth, do you wanna comment on that? Cause I know a lot of you kind of support that process heavily. Uh, I'd say that's fair. Okay. Um, we do have, how, I, how's the automation going? I think it's still pretty good. We do have some bots that kind of help manage the process a little bit. Um, are they, are the bots fully assigning reviewers still, Elizabeth? Or is that no, still no, manual? that's manual. Yeah, that's manual. Okay. Yeah, there's, okay. there's been some like on and off issues with the bots. Okay. Um, the assigning the badge is that done by a bot that is yes yeah. and added to the list of all those who have gotten a badge okay yeah gotcha okay so so that's i just kind of wanted to point out that process josh so from you know from your perspective um mm -hmm. for the public health and safety badge is there a a process, maybe you could describe the process by which you see event organizers applying and, and awarding the badge and then how um, you plan on displaying that badge. Right, so um, current, currently the, and so y'all have been at this, uh, y'all have more experience with, with badging than I do. So I, I'll, I'll say this, Noting that, um, you know, I'm oh, oh, open to suggestion here because this is this is fairly new territory for me. Um, okay. What the current plan is is to um, basically have event organizers 
do a self-assessment, uh, you know, fill out a form very similarly to the way they, the process they go through uh, for the DEI event badges here. Uh, and then the, the form would ask fairly specific questions about each of the sort of, uh, each of the categories that, uh, that are graded for the, the public health pledge uh, badging system. Um, and so the, the aim then would be once they've taken that assessment, uh, similarly, some sort of human review step uh, before sending them a badge uh, that we would then add to the public health pledge website. And we don't yet have graphics that, uh, that we have prepared for organizers to add to their websites, but I, there is something that we would offer them to, to embed on their website so that they could quickly signal that information. Um, so okay. I, 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 if I understand correctly, that's fairly similar to how this process goes, uh, or the mm -hmm. DEI event badging process goes. Um, it does sound similar. Do you, are your, do you plan on the reviews being open and transparent? You know, uh, I hadn't actually given that specifically thought, but, okay. but I, I, there's, I, I really can't imagine a world in which I wouldn't prefer it to be open and transparent and just in, in full okay. view of the public. So, you know, probably we might even do similar uh, in terms of like, well, we've, we've got a GitHub repo. And so that's an opportunity to use that infrastructure. So okay. exactly, we, we might copy a lot of the process that y'all got. <laughs> What, I was going to say, why not, right? <laughs> if it, okay. it's, it's working for us, then if it could help you, then that would be great. Absolutely. Plus, that just means there's less uh, less novel things for event organizers to have to navigate. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, in terms of, I think one of the challenges that we have is making sure we have enough reviewers for the events. And in particular, in particular, say if it's a Linux Foundation, like the events around Open Source Summit North America, we'll end up getting, <laughs> you can tell me Elizabeth and Ruth, but like 15, 20 events that apply within like three days. Ooh, so yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> and so that, and we have at least two reviewers for every single badge. Um, so you can just kind of see, there can be challenges in that as well that I might just want to draw your attention to. Yeah, I appreciate you calling that out. We, we have a, we have a uh, there may be three and a half of us so far on the public health pledge. Um, and so we, we have a small but growing team and uh, it's good. I can set expectations about how we may need to end up spending our time and allocate it. Um, and I will add specific to the, uh, the chaos DEI event badge. Um, I know y'all are going through some sort of uh, a, a bit of some changes here, but I went ahead and uh, threw my hat in the ring. I thought like the, the form that y'all had set up to uh, offer to help with reviews there. Cause. Oh, uh, yay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yay. I did not get a notification of that. So awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. So I'm wondering if, I mean, if, if there's any way that we can help from a badging or a badger, as we call them here in chaos, from a badger perspective, like even a call for help. I don't know if there's, um, Josh, certain like folks that you're looking for, or is it anybody with an interest to help with the reviews? You know, those are good questions. I, I, I have not put them to myself yet. Uh, but that's something I, I have a I have a weekly call with uh, a weekly sync with the the main co organizer of the pledge uh, Sarah Safavi, and uh, I can raise these raise that for discussion at our, our next call. I think it's going to be on Monday. Uh, okay. If, if there's if there's an openness to sort of amplifying a, a call for for badgers, I mean, my goodness, that would be uh, deeply grateful for that. Okay. Cool. Um, and we do have, I would say we're pretty, Elizabeth Ruth, tell me if I'm wrong, but we're pretty open to anybody who has an interest to be a new Badger, but we also have an onboarding process that 
Ruth, do you run or Elizabeth, do you run that helps we both, Badger we both kind of run. understand? Okay. <laughs> so Elizabeth <laughs> and Ruth run it that helps Badgers orient themselves with kind of the expectations and what we're looking for metrics wise and right. Just kind of, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I I would uh I would hate to imagine throwing somebody uh straight into the deep end. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, we're not about that. <laughs> um, Josh, sorry, Matt. Um, Josh, I was going to say, I don't know if you have thought about your application itself and like how that flow works. But um, one thing we had considered but decided not to do, but we considered it, um, was using GitHub has like a, a I don't know if it's in beta or or what status it's in or if it's released to the general public, but they have a GitHub forms um, functionality where you can set up a form and have people mm -hmm. fill that out right on GitHub and it goes right into an issue. So you might like to take a look at that um, just for like a, a, you know, something a little bit easier on your on your group instead of like creating a whole website and like writing yeah. all the code, you know what I mean? That is I did not know that. Thank you. I will definitely look at that. Any anything we can do to avoid needing to spin up a, our own infrastructure or more things to maintain, the better. Elizabeth and Ruth, you kind of like assuming the public health and safety review process, um, like can can get into form, you know what I mean, and, and actually award badges to event organizers. Is it, do you think from a DEI event badging, the chaos event badging perspective, it would simply be like when they apply, they being the event organizers, they we ask, you know, have you received this badge? And they simply point to, to an indication that they have received the badge. Do you think that's how you envision this? That's kind of what I was thinking. If they, if the event organizer can just give us a URL to the place that verifies on Josh's site where they've gotten their badge, assuming Josh mm -hmm. ha has that publicly or, or really, I guess, anywhere, but I would much prefer to send them to Josh's site because I feel like that would be the single source of truth as to who has gotten mm -hmm. a badge and who hasn't. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. We'll, we'll certainly be maintaining a public facing list. Okay. Yeah. Ruth, did you have a comment too? You know, I just okay to what Elizabeth said. One one quick question about that. In the meantime, like we can add it to our application, um, um, but in the meantime, until Josh kind of gets that whole process up and running a little better, do we want to maybe not require that yet for a gold badge? Um, or like, because that was kind of what we talked about is like, you have to have this URL. If you're going to get a gold badge, like that means you're up here and you're doing everything you can. So um, this is like a super important thing. And we had talked about like requiring that in order to get the gold badge, even if everybody got everything else and they didn't do this part, they would get a, they would not get a gold badge. Mm -hmm. So like, it, I'm just thinking about like the, the, the ramping up process and the time. How do we want to handle that? Right. So I think on, I'll, I'll de defer to y'all, um, but to, to give you a, a piece of information to, to maybe decide on the basis of, um, I expect that we will have that up in uh, a week would be too ambitious, but I, I expect we will have that up within two weeks time. Okay, then then it's it's a non issue because it'll probably take us that long to even get it added. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Update update new version. Okay. Yeah, and and actually, so Josh, do you want to just notify us when you're ready to go, and then we can add it in? How's that? Yeah, that that makes sense. I can do that. Um, and you know, I, I apologize. This is a, this is a little bit out of order. Um, Looking at the the metric doc itself, I think the only area where I might want to spend a little more time when I get uh, get to my desk is uh, the uh, what is the section called uh, the implementation. That that list there is excellent, and I think there might just I want to go through that with a fine tooth comb because I think there might be a few few things to add. Um, 
but otherwise I think this doc is, I don't think there's anything else that I would change. Sounds good. And then Josh, I had a question for you. Would it, is it possible for an, like, an event team to get a badge from you for all events that are located in the same location? And again, I'm thinking about the Linux Foundation. So they have a, a whole series of events, but they're always all located, for example, at the Dublin Conference Center. Right. Yeah, you know, thank you for raising that because that's uh, that's something that we need to be prepared for. Uh, yeah, so I, I imagine, um, and, and let me know based on what your experience has been, I imagine we would we would tackle that by saying like, <laughs> what are all the events that are co-located that are under these same policies and measures? Something along those lines. Because I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, I agree, and I'm thinking we might want to think about this with our own badging, Elizabeth. Because, I mean, we have, when we get the 15 to 20 applications with OSSNA, I mean, they are <laughs> really repetitive simply because it's the same services. So for example, family friendliness, you know, if there's, for example, daycare provided on site, it's provided for all of the co-located events. And I'm just, if, if, we, if we include the public health and safety badge plus the chaos DEI badge, I also wanna just be attentive that we're not asking event organizers to do all the things, like so many things in so many different locations that, I don't know, I'm not trying to say like we shouldn't do these things, but just also being um, like thoughtful <laughs> on how people have to apply for the many things, that's all. I mean, I would I would be in support of that, and I'm trying to think of a case where one of the co-located events would be different, have different answers <laughs> than yeah. the others. I I can't really think of a of an example of that. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something we can. Uh, I will say uh, there might be issue <laughs> with. Sorry, now that I think about it, there might be issue with. Um, so we usually check on whether or not like we ask them about their diversity demographics if they're keeping track of all of that and there yeah. i can think of one occasion where even though they were doing everything right they had an all white male lineup and so um, we had to go back to them and just be like yeah you might want to look at that because <laughs> that like that we couldn't really award a gold badge if if that was the case even though they had done everything right like that's just how the cards you know played so um that was one case where that one sub event was different than than the others so but i mean that was like a one-off i think and so i don't know and and they did come back and say yeah that you're absolutely right that does not fall in line with our overarching right. uh, goals and so yeah we will absolutely change that or fix that okay. adjust that yeah so yeah one off okay we might maybe how do you want to think through that, Elizabeth, the co-located events? Before we just say, yeah, let's do it. And then we have some sort of like button that says list all your events associated yeah. with this. I mean, if we if we're gonna change the application to include uh, uh to include that option, that's also a thing. <laughs> like that, that's also gonna take some work to change that application right. because of the way it, it flows right now, but um, and, you know, maybe this is something we will, we could collaborate with the event organizers on, because I also want to make it easy for them to use so, and streamline yeah. things for them. So, you know, I know we talked about starting that event organizer group here. So maybe yeah. that's something that we work with them to figure out. Oh, I like that idea. Okay. All right, cool. All right. So it sounds like from a badging process perspective, it would be kind of Josh to finalize the process. Uh, right. And then on your end, is that is it basically, uh, so on your end, you need to initiate sort of the review process. On my end, I need to stand up the, uh, 
stand up our own review process so that you got a URL to point to. Correct. Um, are those, uh, is there a need for me to have that URL for y'all before you can initiate the review process? Because uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to block block y'all. Um, so I just want to get a sense of what I might need to prioritize on my end to make sure I'm not a blocker. I think so. What do you think, Elizabeth? Yeah, I think we would need that um, just so that our reviewers can verify and have some way yeah. to verify. So. Um, but I mean, like you said, it will, it will we shouldn't take very, very long and it will take us a little bit to add this in um, okay. because we have to make the change in a few different places. And there's actually a, another uh, mm -hmm. metric that we need to add in as well that has not been added in, which is event accessibility. So I'm, I'm thinking we can do it all at once and just like release that badge as like, okay, now we're on version, like whatever, 3.0, 4.0, whatever we're on. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we might like roll this into other things as well, if that's okay with you, Josh, and it might take us yeah. a little bit of time to do that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So I'll go ahead and prioritize getting the, uh, getting that stood up as, as quickly as possible so that I'm not blocking there. And I think um, I think the other, the other met metric we were looking at that hadn't made it over the line yet was uh, event location inclusivity, right? Uh, which I would I would be all too thrilled all too thrilled excuse me uh, to to see uh, see these metrics both going through the review process I think they're both so important yeah that one is in progress so um, if you yeah I mean if you have something that's exciting to you to work on absolutely hundred percent I think have have at it <laughs> go for it okay I might spend some time on that then. Where is that metric right now? Is it an in progress one? I believe so. Yeah, it's event location inclusivity. Um, it's in the spreadsheet. Yeah, I clicked the wrong button. Gosh, Matt, the heck! <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of professional you are. Yeah, oh, right, there sorry. It is. <laughs> Number twenty-two is okay. And do oh we okay, okay so we yeah. can have. So it's pretty far along, actually, but it just never made it quite yeah. over the, the end. Yeah. I, I will say star. I do. I am in. I know. I was just going to say I am in <laughs> of the stars for the bullet. We're, we're drawn to the same things. I want, I want that everywhere. I want us all to be stars. stars. <laughs> They're all made of stars. Isn't that Moby? Yeah, that is. <laughs> All right. Well, this is great. Josh, do you have that link or do you need that? Um, I've got the, uh, I've got a bookmark to the uh, metrics uh, spreadsheet. So I've got that. Thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, great. So my guess is that, I mean, this could be something that we all collectively work on too, Josh. I mean, if we, if it sounds like for the next release for the chaos badging, that it would include the public health and safety metric, along with what was the other one you had mentioned? Event accessibility. Oh yeah, okay. This would be a a, a pretty pretty substantial uh, release to uh, to to roll roll these two or three metrics up together. I think that would be so cool to. I think it would just make a, an even bigger splash because they're they're all so important. Yeah, for sure. And, and we have always said we kind of wanted to make it more difficult to get that gold badge as we go along and we kind of just ask for more things. But um, I, don't, I don't know if that's good, but I, you know, I kind of like holding them to a little bit higher standards as we evolve as a, you know, open source evolves in general. Like when you think about it, like before we would just like it's back in the day, it was like, oh, do you have a code of conduct? Like that was it. And so like, right. I really like how things have kind of evolved and, and progressed. So I'm, I'm down with that. Cool. I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense for, for the, the standards to, to raise over time because, you know, we, we, we learn more. Very true. I'm wondering, Elizabeth, as we have, um, as we roll event accessibility and public health and safety, 
it might be nice for us to reach out to, in particular, the LF event organizers and just kind of let them know that these are changes because they have been so engaged with the process that I would hate, honestly, for them to apply when they could do, they could, they could address these, these metrics and then they're in the, you know, kind of the speed round of applying. <laughs> they're like, oh, wait, what? You know, so maybe um, help them a little bit, see that yeah, these changes coming. A hundred percent agree. I would definitely give them a heads up. Um, actually, I think what I was kind of thinking in my head was that we would reach out and, and start this event organizer group and then mm -hmm. let the whole group know, hey, these are the changes we're going to be implementing. And also we're working on making the process smoother. Like there are other things that we can um, that we need to kind okay. of give them a heads up on as well. So. Um, that was in my head kind of how it was going to go, but I don't, I don't know. That's just in my head. <laughs> I don't know if that yeah, jives with everything else. So. Have we gotten the big applications for OSSNA in Vancouver? Not yet. Those will come usually in Mar March, if I remember. And so would we plan on having this done before that? You see what I'm uh, <laughs> just trying. March is a month away, so <laughs> you do the math. Maybe. 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 What is I think um, it's a strong maybe? <laughs> Uh, what, what what does that look like on your end? Because I'm not familiar with what your review, what your process is between review and and saying, okay, we've we've got something we're including in a new release. I, I will say that I'm deeply motivated to, <laughs> to get, well, well, on the one hand, I'm excited to to get as many things across the line as possible. I'm also deeply motivated to get this public health uh, metric across the line on the sooner side um, because it's such a such a present present issue. Yeah, agreed. So like, let's, let's shoot for that. Let's shoot for having these roll out and like notifying the group and like in the next few weeks, we have a few weeks um, and I'm just guessing it'll be March. So um, I think the sooner the better. So yeah, well, yeah. let's shoot for that. I'm thinking even like today or tomorrow, probably reach out to whoever the current applicants are. They seem to change a little bit sometimes, but um uh, who I'm yeah. trying to think of who the head of the event team is at the LF for some reason oh, I can't remember. I Andy her name. Name? Yes. She's great. Yeah, I agreed. And so maybe just reach out to her would be the what best place to start. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Who who what did you say? I didn't I missed what you said of the person's name. Angela Brown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, of course. Yes. Okay, I'll reach out to Angela and maybe she can help me disperse the info. Yeah, right. Team. I don't think she would be the person to have that conversation yeah. with, but she can help. You know, okay. Reach it to the person. And then I think it would be just, it's, it's almost just saying like, just FYI, prior to applying um, for the OSSNA and all the OSSNA co located events. The anticip we anticipate to have this metric, the public health and safety metric, along with event accessibility as part of the, and I think it would probably be important to, I, I heard you say that like they cannot get a gold badge if they do not do public health and safety. Is that correct? I think that's what we were thinking of. Yeah, I mean, it would be kind of silly to give a badge for public health and safety if they're not doing any of it. No, no, no. For just for the overall chaos DEI badge, because oh, in so the past, no DEI badge if there was no health and safety effort, they wouldn't get a gold DEI chaos okay. DEI badge. That was the discussion, and oh, the yeah, only that's props. a bit of a change from our process because. Our prior process in terms of awarding a badge is based on a percentage of attention to metrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not one particular metric. Yeah. And um, that, so that is a conversation we'll have to have with Enoch and the bot, since the bot will calculate and like issue the badge mm -hmm. itself. Um, it, well, and you know what? And that being said, like, are there other metrics that we should absolutely require some level of attention to in order to get the gold badge? Like, is accessibility one? Is 
you know, I don't know what, what else we would think it would be like in that, like, you got to do this. If you're going to be up yeah, here, I, like you got to do these things at least. It would probably have to be a set of metrics that are accessible for everybody. Cause like sometimes like, again, we've had issues around, um, I think, is it family friendliness? When some events were like, we're just so small, we just don't have the resources. Right. And I would yeah. not include that. Like, I think it's a nice to have family friendliness is definitely a nice to have, but I don't know that that is like a core requirement. Like, I feel like code of conduct is a core requirement. So right. like if we're weighting these, you know, or, or thinking of, of like weighted uh, metrics, like core, I would put code yeah. of conduct in that list and it may be event of accessibility in that list. Yeah. Like you got to do some level of something there, like to get that gold badge. That would right. just be my right. Like it's it's not always this entire list kind of thing. That's right. where we do our metrics. It, but yeah. you're, you're, you're addressing, and I think the same holds true for the public health and, and safety badge, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, Josh. Like there are, like, you're doing a great job, you're thinking about it, and you're not doing anything at all. We're kind of categories, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Because they're, you know, I think it's really prudent to, to keep in mind that the, uh, astonishing diversity of, of shapes and sizes of events um and so okay. trying to leave some room for like hey you know at least on, on the for, for the public health pledge badging itself the way that we're going to be thinking about it is there are probably there's probably going to be a need to uh to excel on at least one or two measures to be seen as like okay this is a you're, you're doing a good job but there's right. every expectation that even those who are trying their very best um, are are going to get some efforts made scores, and they might get one out of the five or six. They might get, uh, you know, sort of the a flunking grade on that one category. But that's still kind of expected because, for instance, that category might be the testing one, and smaller events just don't have the budget to provide tests. Right. Right. And I, I mean, I would just want them to even just go apply and just think about it. like show that you're at least thinking about this stuff, even if you don't have all the answers and you haven't implemented like you're just trying like I think that's kind of where we come we come like our, our approach anyway is just like just how are you attending to this? Is it on your mind at all? <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, and, and, I, and I, I definitely share that the idea is is like, well, we want you to do the very best that you possibly can. But the the goal really with the badging is one, to get organizers thinking about it, but two, to provide that information to prospective participants so that they can make the risk assessment themselves. So it's like, okay, maybe you couldn't do everything under the sun, but you've at least provided me information about what you have done. And now I'm equipped as, as a, a prospective attendee to figure out how to navigate that and accommodate that, um, which right. that, that's, that's a win right there. Right. Cool. Okay. So that, I think we're, I think we're all in agreement on that. That sounds, that sounds really good. Uh, Toria also had put in the chat, Josh, that if you're interested in, oh, no, wait, this is on event accessibility. Yeah, Toria, we have a metric um, that we released around that, but if you want to look at it and just like, make sure that we're not missing something or there's stuff to add. Um, that would be awesome. I don't, I think like, yeah, I mean, that's the Google Doc, but also you could maybe link to the metric on the website, which would be like the final, final, <laughs> just in case. Well, here I have the GitHub handy. Fair enough. That one. Yeah. Do you want to drop that in the uh, minutes? Sure. Yep, and, and we're at the end of time, so I will drop that in the minutes though here before I forget. Put it in the chat. Well, thank you all so much. I'm I'm really uh, excited to be collaborating on this. Yeah, likewise. I think I, at this point, let's just meet again next week, right, and see where we're all yeah. at. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Take everyone. Care. See ya. Take care.